welcome artists um, and welcome to week one of the art projects. My name is Miss Manning if you haven't met me already and this is my studio in Sydney. Firstly before we start the most important thing is when we're making art and we're being creative is you have to think of safety first. So it's really important to be thinking of the safety of yourself and also the safety of any people or pets around you. Um, I'm not wearing anything fancy, I've just got some old clothes on, I've got jeans and an old t-shirt, I've got a little bit of paint on my front here because I've used it for painting before and I'm also wearing closed toe sneakers as well. So wear appropriate clothes for when you are going to be creating. Um, and also you need to be thinking about the space that you're working in. I am really, really lucky and I have this studio space to work in, but I know most people won't have a space like this. This is a really, really new space for me. Um, before this, I was always working in the living room or the bedroom or the yard or wherever I could to, to get my work done. So, you know, this is, this is a really, really new thing for me. So you need to think about where you'll be working. So for example, you wouldn't be wanting to work um, in a doorway, um, you know, where people need to be getting in and out past you and you wouldn't go and work in the bathroom in front of the toilet. That's also not going to work for you either. So think very carefully about where you can set up, where you're not going to be disturbed, um, and if you're having trouble finding somewhere, maybe ask an adult around you as well. You also need to make sure that you're also protecting the spaces around you. So protect yourself, wear old clothes, but you also need to be putting something down on any surfaces that you're working on as well. So make sure that if you're working on a dining table that you put some newspaper or an old sheet or you know an old towel that doesn't that's not important anymore. Put that down to also protect any surfaces that you're working on as well. So if you're working on the carpet, put something down underneath of you. So the world that we're in at the moment, it's changed a lot. Um, we know we're spending more time at home and the way that we're doing schooling is a very, very different way to how we're used to doing it. We're now doing our learning mostly online and you will also be having the phrase Zooming or doing a Zoom conference call, that's just become a normal part of our conversation now and a normal way that how we communicate with other people, how we communicate with our classmates and with our teachers. So this period of isolation and quarantine is not a new thing. Um, this has happened many times and during different periods of history and people and civilizations have survived this many times over. So this is not a new idea and some of the world's greatest artistic, musical, scientific, create, scientific creations and discoveries were all made during these times. Some examples of some of these discoveries and innovations that have been made during periods of isolation and quarantine include author Mary Shelley, who wrote the book Frankenstein during a time where people had to isolate in their homes because of a volcanic eruption. William Shakespeare, very, very famous playwright, wrote King Lear and Macbeth during a time of plague when all the public playhouses and theatres were shut down. Isaac Newton also discovered and started developing his theories of gravity during a time when the plague was happening and really decimating some of the populations in Europe. And of course, there's always the diary of Anne Frank, which was written by Anne when her family were hidden in a part of her house for 25 months. And that has become one of the most famous books of all time. So we all are really living through a really important and substantial time in history. 
And we really need to be able to see this as an opportunity for productivity, innovation, problem solving, creativity. We will see what people will create in the future from being in isolation during this time. So as we're going to be working on flat lay photography and layouts today, you might be asking what is a flat lay? A flat lay is essentially a, a photograph that's taken from a bird's eye view, so that means from above, and it's of objects or items that are laid out neatly on the ground. So this week's project is going to be creating your very, very own flat lay using items from your recycling bin. So these items that you are going to be collecting for today's flat lay, I'm going to get you to keep collecting them over the next few weeks because we will be actually using these for another project that we do in the future. So please keep everything that you have um, especially things that are made out of cardboard and paper. Leave anything that's plastic or metallic behind and keep that in your, in, in your recycling bin because we're just going to be working with uh, paper and cardboard items. The original flat lay was known as Nolling and it was developed by a caretaker of a furniture store named Andrew Cromelau when he did, he really kind of was looking at all of his tools and he discovered how nice they all looked when he arranged them neatly on the ground and they were photographed from above. So the flat lay was a really and is a really really commonly used technique that you see in social media such as Pinterest, um, it's also used in ads and magazines, even television commercials you will see this technique being used. Um, open any magazine and it won't take you very long to find an example of flat lay photography and layouts. I've actually been collecting all of these items for a few weeks so I do have a head start which looks like you know why I have so many bits and pieces. So when you start gathering all your bits and pieces together try to keep them in one place or in a couple of places. I just have mine in a couple of old bags here. So these are pretty pretty full cool now and we'll just start opening them up so you can have a bit of of a look at the types of materials that I will be working with. So as you can see my table that I'm working on is a little bit small. So when we actually start creating our flat lay layouts I will be moving this all onto the floor but this is my pile. And so you can see here that I have things like tissue boxes and just bits of, this is actually um, a piece from a toilet roll. I have ads that have come, so junk mail, boxes, old gift bags. Um, there's just like takeaway coffee containers, egg cartons. So anything that is paper or cardboard, you will be able to use for this project. So make sure you're not throwing out anything, even those little bits of junk mail that just come through your post. Gather it all up, collect it. Um, any of your little takeaway menus, grab those as well and keep it all together in a box or a bag or some sort of container just so we can get it all in one place and then you'll be able to arrange it. This is where I was saying the point about making sure that the space that you're working in is going to be appropriate. So where I was sitting, where I had the table right here, there wasn't enough space on the floor for me to use to lay out my flat lay. So I've now pushed the table over 
towards the wall there so it gives me a little bit more room to work with and a bit more workspace. So make sure that you are working with a space that you can move around and is appropriate for the size of the flat lay that you are making. part is that we're going to be photographing our work so make sure you have enough room to walk around your piece and the most important thing is when you're taking a flat lay photo is that you are going to be shooting directly from above so it's really important that your camera is lined up so that it is parallel to the floor or parallel to your flat surface I don't want to see cameras like this or like this. It needs to be taken from this way up here. So you might not have a, um, a phone on a camera on your phone. You might just be using a iPad or a laptop, or you could even be using a digital camera as well. At this stage, don't need to worry about making sure that it's all framed perfectly because we, that can all be cropped down later. But make sure that you are not chopping off any pieces on the outside of your image. So if you need to, make sure you also stand up on a stepping stool. Make sure you have somebody around to spot you and be very, very safe and careful. No standing on wobbly chairs or anything really unsafe so make sure like we just said in the very very first point is your safety is first so I'm just gonna take that one there and done so I've just now come outside of my studio to work in the garden so think about the different spaces that you have in your house if you don't have a garden obviously work inside but if you do have a bit of a look if there's any areas that would be a really good background for the space and for setting up your flat lay picture. So I have here just a bit of um, decking area so I'm just going to be arranging my work just really really quickly in um, this area here. I've just used some of my old materials I haven't brought out my big bags I've only just got a few little bits and pieces here that I just grabbed quickly and I'm just going to be setting up in this space here so you can see a couple of different compositions of how you might arrange your works as well. So when you are laying out your flat lays, number one is think about the backgrounds that you are working on. So you want to make sure that there's nothing distracting and that you can frame that really nice and cleanly. So you can see here on my deck area, there is a little bit of dirt and you know, there's a little bit of crayon that's been on there, there's a little bit of paint, there's some seeds and twigs, but I don't actually mind that as a look. The only problem is, is when you're working outside, you do have to work quite quickly because the wind might blow things away. So I do have things overlapping and fanned out here so you can arrange your work in many many different ways things don't need to be facing up the right way so this magazine here is not facing so that the writing of the title of the bunnies catalogue is is up at this point so I have it so it's on its side and 
that's it. I'm just going to leave that. Actually, I might add one more little piece in here. Just for a little bit of colour. And that is my really simple flat lay. If you want to make a couple of them, you can as well. I'm really, really excited and looking forward to the pieces that you create. Thank you.